A lot of questions, Andrew. You know, in their filing yesterday, prosecutors said this, quote, Smirnov's anticipated travel from the United States on Friday of last week, two days after his return, was for the purpose of meeting with Russian intelligence officials, among others. Help us understand, then, why Smirnov was released yesterday, Andrew. I was actually quite surprised that he was released. Uh, he it is worth noting that the magistrate judge who did that did uh, impose GPS monitoring, did insist that his passports uh, be surrendered to pretrial services. So um, the magistrate judge um, did impose limits. I am not surprised by Tom's uh, reporting that the government is appealing that. That is what happens when you have a magistrate judge who makes the initial ruling and you disagree with it and you ask the district judge, who is an Article Three federal judge, to oversee that and to um, rehear the case. Um, the reason I'm not surprised is because the government laid out not just the extensive ties to wealthy foreigners, not just this particular defendant's own wealth in, in somewhat masked forms uh, that he has access to a lot of money, according to the government. But also, he is actually a citizen of a foreign country, and not just any foreign country, of Israel, where it would be incredibly hard to extradite him if he were to flee to Israel. Um, so there are just many reasons to think that he is a flight risk, which is a key issue. There are also concerns that he was less than candid uh, with pretrial services in his interviews about his wealth and his connections. Um, so I wouldn't be surprised if a district judge um, reverses this and we'll wait and, and see um, what happens there uh, as to whether he gets bail. Uh Andrew, earlier, my colleague Tom Winter invoked you and said, well, Andrew knows all about this, so let's remind folks why it is that you would know all about this. You worked on the Mueller probe about Russian interference in 2016. Your reaction to this news that an FBI informant who made explosive claims about the Bidens had ties to Russian intelligence. Are the Russians meddling in our elections? Again, because Donald Trump, because Republicans are welcoming it. Sure. Well, so let's first um, have um, everyone understands that right now what we have is the government's submission. That is not evidence that has not been tested yet. So it's important to just have that as a caveat. So everything I'm going to say is sort of assuming that those allegations are true and can be shown to be true, um, then th this is, I sort of have two thoughts. Um, one goes to the, the fact that Russian disinformation was something that um, was obviously uncovered, investigated, and laid out, not just in the Mueller report, which, you know, I worked on, but also in a Senate bipartisan report um, that was that Republicans and Democrats signed on to talking about um, Russian efforts to not meddle, I hate meddle sense so benign, <laughs> to actually influence the 2016 election. But fast forward, what you're covering and the clips you played are that is something that is still going on, but it's inside the House. What used to be 2016 interference that, that Republicans and Democrats understood was a threat to our country. It should be a bipartisan issue. You know who should get to decide American elections? Americans who can vote. Um, that is not a Democratic or Republican issue. Um, but what you're seeing now is that all of those concerns are now being weaponized in a way that is so fundamentally at odds with what any person who believes in having a true and fair election based on facts and policy differences um, should be against. So that's sort of point one. And point two is just about the Department of Justice and thinking about the current Department of Justice and the Department of Justice in the Trump administration, because that is what we will be facing if he is reelected. Um, with all of the faults that many people have pointed out with respect to Merrick Garland and David Weiss as a special counsel, um, you have an administration that appointed a special counsel for the sitting president. You have a, um, an administration that appointed a special counsel for the son 
of the sitting president. You have um, charges that were brought by the special counsel with respect to the son of the sitting president. You know what you didn't have? You didn't have a misleading uh, summary by the attorney general spinning any sort of report. Um, you didn't have what we had to deal with when I worked with special counsel Mueller, which is day in and day out, worrying about the president of the United States pulling the plug and ending the investigation or obstructing the investigation. Um, and so I think what you're seeing here is you have a special counsel who has brought charges with respect to um, Hunter Biden, but also, which, you know, obviously you could have people who are Democrats thinking they're upset by that. But you also have charges against an informant who was, um, per, you know, really um, trying to solicit and um, purvey uh, Russian disinformation and weaponize that. So it is a very sort of bipartisan um, effort on the special counsel's part, which is um, how the Department of Justice is supposed to work. And it is a testament to them. Um, that that is what they are doing, regardless of whether it sort of helps or hurts Democrats or Republicans. Tim, I think Andrew Weissman has always hit the nail right on the head, which is election interference has been and should be a bipartisan issue. And yet here we are. We find ourselves with Republican leadership that in no way wants to reckon with the foundation of what is happening here. Yeah, absolutely. I, I kind of want to put a finer point on what Andrew said about how this is now coming from inside the House of Representatives, inside the Republican conference was in the House of Representatives. I, this is an unprecedented and, and really historic kind of moment if what is, the, is alleged is true. And what we have here is an impeachment inquiry. We've not had that many of those. Right? Uh, an impeachment investigation going against the president of the United States premised on totally false information that allegedly was sourced from Russian intelligence, that was sourced from our foe, right? That, that, and, and frankly, kind of preposterous information. I, let's just be honest. Like this notion that Joe Biden took $5 million and had some web of bank accounts that, were, that was so complex that it would take 10 years to unravel. That was one of Smirnov's claims. Like it's kind of it's laughable at the face, right? Like this notion that the, CIA, that the American CIA could not have un uncovered this, but that Elise Stefanik and, and Byron Donalds, you know, could. I, you know, that, like, it was a preposterous accusation. But for these folks, for Republicans in the House to push this false information about the sitting president and, and become tools in, in a foreign power, in a foe's effort to interfere in our elections, to, to tear down the sitting president of the United States, to prop up his rival. And it is, you know, again, assuming that what is in the government's claims here are accurate, I don't see any reason to not assume that at this point, but assuming that they're accurate, I mean, this is a scandal of historic proportions. I'd just like to put it in context. It's akin to, you know, imagine if during the Cold War in the 80s, the Soviets had trumped up some fake information about Ronald Reagan being on the take and Tip O'Neill and the Democratic House had opened up an inquiry, an investigation into it, into him. I, that would be something that would be echoing and, and, you know, that would be talked about in conservative media 40, 50 years later. Uh, and so the fact that this is happening now and that there's one party that is complicit in this, uh, I, I don't think the significance can be understated, really. To put an even finer point on your fine point of Andrew Weissman's fine point, you say it would have been a scandal of epic proportions. I want you to take a listen by contrast to what Jim Jordan had to say about it today. Take a listen. What do you think of the Smirnoff indictment? Well, I mean, it is what it is. So. Uh... Doesn't change the fundamental facts. You say it doesn't change the facts. It does change the facts. Those are no longer facts. Those are not. Those are not true. The four things I just said—they're absolutely true. Tim, is what it is. Yeah, it is what it is. You know, the Russians are trying to take down the sitting president with fake information, um, and it is what it is. Is his cover for saying what he really thinks, which is good, right? Which is that we want that, and and that's really the dark underbelly of this. That, uh, that many members of the Republican Party are happy to use Russian information in order to take down Joe Biden and prop up Donald Trump. It's just that they've been caught this time. And, um, you know, as a factual matter, I, I've seen the longer version of that uh, Jim Jordan press conference and the four fa the four points that he said are, are, are remain true. A couple of those are not true, too. Right. I mean, like he continues <laughs> to 
to uh, to rely on this notion that Joe Biden was somehow influencing the Ukrainian prosecutor to help Burisma, which has just been debunked upon debunked upon debunked. It just hasn't been debunked as clearly as this totally fabricated claim by Smirnov about the five million dollar corruption. Tim.